Hi, and welcome to my studio. My name is Jonathan the Painter, but I was not always Jonathan the Painter. Uh, in fact, I didn't really start painting at all until my dad was diagnosed with late stage cancer. And the one thing he asked of me was my best friend. And I was like, dad, I will run through a brick wall for you. What do you need from me? And the one thing he asked of me was to stay positive. And I thought long and hard about it. And we go to the waiting room and I was like, well, how do you stay positive? And the way that I was able to translate that from him was to stay colorful, right? So I'd never painted before, but I figured might as well bring some pens and pencils. Might as well pick up some crayons or some markers or what, really whatever they had there and just start creating these distractions. And they really became distractions and, and part connections too. And so what would happen is that we'd sit in the waiting room and then I would paint, you know, like a heart. I would do a little heart, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing too fancy, just really, really just a heart. And then I would leave it. I would paint these hearts and I would leave them for nurses, for radiation techs. And, and it wasn't necessarily, I wasn't painting them to be good. I was just trying to pass some time. But what I realized was that the next day when I came in, there was a bunch of these hearts that were all kind of taped up in the cubicles or taped up in the workrooms. And it wasn't necessarily about whether they were good or bad. It was about how it made people feel. And so I kind of kept painting. And even though my dad was sick and he passed away uh, after four months, uh, it was just my way to stay connected with him. Uh, we would talk about all kinds of things through artwork and, and just, you know, find a place that was, that was a little happier than the moments that we were in. And then we would cr create connections with people in the waiting room. You know, I would draw like a, a, a Red Sox hat or something like that. And then the Yankees fans that would always come in and, and be in the wait, waiting room with us would finally chime in and they'd be like, oh, you know, you're going you're gonna to paint, paint a Red Sox hat or you're going to draw Fenway Park and you didn't see the series. You guys, you know, you got no closer and they'd go on and on and on and list all the complaints. And in the meanwhile, every time, every week we'd see, we'd see people and, and it would come back to the Red Sox. It wouldn't necessarily be about cancer. It would come back to, you know, something else that was a good distraction from why we were there. So it wasn't necessarily about being good or bad. It was just about doing something creative that was positive that was colorful you know and that helped i think that helped pass time in a way that felt meaningful so we'd have hearts we'd have hats we'd have fish in the fish tank we would have all kinds of things and if nothing else we could just mix colors on a page and sometimes sometimes it's just as satisfying as that and so I don't really have any formal background of painting, never really took a painting class. Uh, my background's in architecture. I love architecture and sustainable design, but I've always kind of come back to painting as a way to stay grounded, as a way to stay connected with my dad and with all the amazing people, all the compassionate and incredible stories that, that we've met along the way. Um, and that we've picked up along the way and, and just, just awesome people. And I think one of the things that, we've realized through the trauma of going through our cancer journey is that there's so much good and you can't necessarily just let the weight of the negative and, and the, the tragedy um, come down upon all of these shining examples of humanity. And so I feel like I'm able to capture a lot of those stories, you know, in the paintings. And, and I feel like maybe we could navigate our way through painting together and I could share some of those stories and above all else, just kind of give you permission to paint, you know, take some of the mystery away from it, uh, take some of the worry away from it, take some of the focus off of what it looks like, what it's going to look like, because we don't know. We're just going to have a little journey here and just enjoy the moment, enjoy the moments together, uh, enjoy the moments being colorful and maybe enjoy the moment of creating something that you didn't think was possible in a way that you didn't know beforehand. And that's kind of been the magic of painting for me is that it always allows me to grow. It always allows me room for exploration and expression and, and to check in with myself and to connect with the people around me. Um, and so with that being said, 
I'm the artist in residence at Mass General Hospital Cancer Center and Boston Medical Center Cancer Center. And it's just a fancy way for getting to say, I, I go into the hospital and I get to be the one person there that doesn't know what they're doing. I get to bring my paints and my brushes and I run workshops and pop-up studios. And I kind of wanted to bring that atmosphere and the spirit of just the spontaneous, colorful, uh, approachable, art is a verb kind of kind of attitude. And to say like, we can all paint together. You know, I'm working on a big canvas here, 30 by 40. I like working large, but you can work at any size and it can scale up and scale down. And, and I developed my technique where I use a brush. I'm using just a, a three quarter inch uh, synthetic brush here, but I have quarter inch and half inch. And, you know, there's palette knives and there's all kinds of round brushes and flat brushes. And what's fun is uh, it's like poetry in a way where you really get to find your own voice through this. And sometimes the hardest part can be, where do I start? Right. And that's why I just wrote stay colorful. It, it could be a mantra. It could be a heart or a hat or it could just be random colors we mix on the page. And that's how we're going to start our sky. But the but the bottom line is you just give yourself that permission because the critic is always going to want to come out and the critic is always going to want to say, well, it's not good enough. You're not doing it right. And and. What the critic doesn't necessarily acknowledge is that in painting, there is no right or wrong. There really isn't. You know, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder. And that's why I enjoy the making it part, because a lot of the pieces that got, got put up, I remember very early on, my dad had to stay over in a, in a room. We had, the, we had a great doctor, really incredible, incredibly compassionate team, just, just in general. And his talk, you know, I, I did this little quick little sketch of a, of a, um, a bridge right across from where we were staying and and, and he hung it up, he hung it up over the floral print that was in my dad's room, his doctor did. And he came in the next morning, he said, Jonathan, I just wanted to let you know that I'm the one that hung that up there because when I came in, it, it reminded me to always look at things from a patient's perspective. And it took that little sketch that was kind of like um, a meaningless little, you know, uh, I, I, almost like a little frustrating piece of art for me. And it redefined it in a way where it wasn't about me and it wasn't about my story. And so now when I paint, I paint to give meaning to other people and connection to other people. So when you see something and when you see a heart, it's your heart. I paint it, it's got my story. But when you look at it and when you paint yours, and, and we'll do all this stuff, it's going to be yours. And so you can paint along with me. You can watch with me. You can watch long enough to get inspired and empowered to want to find a creative outlet for yourself. And it doesn't have to be painting. It could be taking a walk and listening to the birds. It could be writing some poetry or writing a book, uh, listening to music, uh, drumming on your desk. It, it, it just having the creative outlet so it doesn't stay bottled up is, is really critical. It's been really important for me. Um, so that being said, because I do a lot of work with the hospital and I got to kind of clean up with soap and water, I use acrylic paint. I, I just like it anyway and it dries quick and it's got good texture to it. And so I, I tend to use this Windsor & Newton gallery. I, I honestly, this is just seems like the most economical way for me to balance out a nice paint. It seems like it mixes really well with, um, with a good price. Cause I go through a lot of paint and I go through a lot of paint with a lot of people. And one of the things we do is we run paint nights. And so we run paint nights with patients uh, and nurses and doctors that range anywhere from uh, 10 or 15 patients or individually all the way up to 300 nurses. And so when we do that, we use paints that are even more economical which are just these basic kind of craftsman acrylic paints. And, and, and we'll do, so I'll do some demonstrating and we can kind of, we can have some fun with these too. They're a little bit more, they, they, are, they're, they run a little bit more. Um, and so you kind of got to take that into account. But that being said, it gives you an opportunity uh, to create something a little bit different and we can have a lot of fun with that. But for now, I'm going to just start with my three quarter inch synthetic brush and my Windsor & Newton. I got the rainbow. It's kind of what I paint with. So I've got the cadmium red and, uh, and orange. And then I got a yellow. You know, it's, and it's really, I, I use a cadmium, but it's your choice um, of, of whatever. You, go, you could go in and take a look and whatever colors look good to you and a green. And I, I, cerulean blue uh, is my sky. We're going to start with that in a second. So I'm going to show you that. Um, and then this opera rose, which I really, I really do love. Um, I think it's a really punchy color and it, it, it kind of, it dials up uh, a lot of warmth and a lot of kind of highlights on its own in, in a really, in a fun way, but, but it blends well too. So 
those are the colors I'm going to be starting with. And, and one of my, the most relaxing things for me to do and a way for me to cover a large canvas pretty quickly is just to kind of paint a sky. So the first step to usually what I do is a background and sometimes it's colorful and, and really it could just be more of this red and orange and yellow and mixing all that through. That look that would look really nice. But I, I, I just I also just like and I could put it we could put it we could paint right on the canvas, right? And we'll add some of this titanium white. Good amount of the titanium white, it mixes well with everything. And then let's add some of this this cerulean blue hue. I might be pronouncing that totally wrong. Like I said, I, I don't really have a background for this other than to have a real passion for it. And so I'm gonna add, I think that's about enough. You know, we can always add more or less and then this opera rose, I mean, this is gonna find its way. I know this is gonna find its way in the painting somehow. And we can have an idea what we wanna paint. We can have no idea what we wanna paint. I knew I wanted to start with the sky. So I kinda, I figured we could, we could start there. Right. And so we got our, our set up with just our colors, you know, and you could you could mix it as you can go as fast with this, as slow with this as you want. You could paint out to the edges all the way out and you could wrap the, the canvas and we could we could show you that. Or you could just kind of leave it, you know, a little bit more impressionist and and just kind of don't come all the way out to the edge, you know, just kind of start mixing the colors and just leave them where they go. And so I, when, I, when I mix, I tend to mix light to dark. I don't have any real rules that I use. It's just I've picked up on some, I think, techniques for me that, that work a little bit better or that I've, I've um, worked through some frustrating moments with. And, you know, that's kind of the other fun thing with painting is that whenever I feel like I just can't get it right or I don't know what I'm doing, uh, whenever I just get to that moment of such frustration with a painting and not, not having a good direction with it, um, it's usually a good sign. And it's not even necessarily a good sign for that painting, but usually what will happen is I'll, I'll, I'll finish the thought, the expression, you know, I'll, work through, I'll work through my emotions on canvas and it'll begin to elicit some kind of a movement of composition. So I'll kind of be like, oh, you know, this actually kind of makes me feel like, you know, it's, it is, it's sky-like, you know, this is, this is already starting to feel very sky-like. And so at that point, I could just focus on the one thing. So A, we're painting, there's no right or wrong answer, and B, we're just focused on the sky. And we're just moving the paint back and forth. And you could just see naturally how nicely it mixes. You know, you, you really, you can't go wrong. So the blue and the pink and even the colors that I had painted underneath with the heart and everything like that, you know, it's, it's picking up those colors. And, and we can add more of anything. You know, I'm gonna, I'll add a little bit more of the blue in here. Right, and I, and I think white just kind of, just blends this so nicely. So, and before we know it, and again, we can go to the edge, we can not go to the edge. Worst case scenario, this happens to me all the time, is we let this thing dry and we paint over it. And I always joke around and I always say, you know, the painting I'm messing up right now is just really the base coat for the next painting I'm going to be really happy with. And so it's important to kind of get it out of my system and have fun with it while I do. And so even now, you know, just, just even adding, oh, I could just, we could add titanium white here and just kind of build out this sky. I'm calling it a sky now. We're calling it, we're saying sky. And, and one of the reasons I love, we're gonna start with the sky here is that you just can't go wrong. The colors in the sky. You know, I live by the ocean up in the Northeast, up north of Boston. And any given, any given night, any given morning, the sun rises, the sun sets, the colors are just spectacular. And it almost feels like it could be a little overwhelming because it's like, well, I can't even, I can't do that any justice. And again, the point is not necessarily, for me, it's not necessarily to go out and sit at the sky. The point is to get the feeling 
of, 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 of how it feels when you're, when you're out there. And for me, the painting it part, that's the part I focus on because the looking at it part becomes somebody else's. So many times, oh, I could, we could, uh, so many times somebody comes along and looks at one of my paintings, depending on how far along I am or not, and they'll say, oh, I know exactly what that is. Somebody did this. I'll tell you, there was this, did this boat. Right, here, let's put it in over here. So I started to do this one day at the hospital and somebody was like, oh, I know what that is. It was like this, it was, it was just like that. I was like, oh, you know what that is? And, uh, and they were like, yeah, that's the, uh, I think it had a mast actually, or <laughs> a con, I see I gave it away. They're like, that's the boat I went on my honeymoon with 42 years ago. And he proceeded to tell me, I was in the cancer center, and he proceeded to tell me the shoes that his wife wore when she got off that boat, the weather that day when she got off that boat. And he just had the biggest smile on his face talking for 20 minutes, half an hour, in between an appointment on how happy the sailboat made him. And at that point, I was like, oh, I guess it is a sailboat. Honestly, I, I was I was inching towards it, but I hadn't quite gotten there. And so now when I paint that red sailboat, I remember that story. And it's not just my red sailboat. And what it does is it helps me just enjoy the actual, the painting it part. And not the looking at it part. Because when he looked at that boat... He saw something very different than I did. And when I painted the boat, I felt happy. And I just want to make sure that painting always makes us feel happy. And we're allowed to feel frustrated. It's like life. We're allowed to feel frustrated. And we're allowed to not really know where something's going. And we're allowed to just kind of float with it a little bit and mix things around. But at the end of the day, got to enjoy the process because how everybody looks at things is going to be different to each person. And so there, I'm going to add a white boat. And why not? Why not take a little bit of this blue? Use the, uh, I'm going to use the Windsor blue. I'm going to use a little Windsor blue for this. And that was, again, just the titanium white, right? And we'll add these boats, these simple boats that you wouldn't even, I honestly, I forget their boats half the time when I'm painting them because they're just shapes that evoke stories and thoughts, places and people. All right, we'll start to build out this water. So we got our sky, real colorful sky. That's a, that's a colorful sky. I think the stay colorful really mixed in nicely with that. And I'm going to take some of this Windsor blue, and I'm just going to kind of mix it in the background here, the boats. Let's see how that treats us. So, yeah, I always painted quick because time was of the essence, and we'd always be in a waiting room or waiting for an appointment or waiting for a treatment, and I never knew how long I'd have to sit there. And so... I think it's fun that I just, you know, I maybe paint a little like I sketch. And I think when people see that, they want to loosen up a little bit and paint like this. And I think you can. I think, I'd like to say there's a magic formula to it. I think everybody's got to find their own, their own approach. But the only way you can get there is by doing it. And really giving yourself permission to do it because you'll get there. You'll start to find, you know, you'll start to find how the, the brush kind of moves the paint around and you could create little waves or you could create reflections and you'll start to find your, your kind of magic with it and with yourself. But it, it's neat because the unexpected can always happen. I'm going to switch back. I think maybe we'll add a little of that cerulean blue hue 
that we had in the sky, we'll bring that into the water. And one thing that I've picked up on in painting a bit is that the reflections, which is why I like this, because the reflections here are so pronounced, the reflections always tend to be vertical. You know, that it'll, it'll stay vertical, whether it's choppy water or whether it's whether it's the reflection in uh, um, a puddle or a pond or a river or a city, um, a window. It's nice because you can always take a few principles that'll, that'll hold true. Um, it's like being a good person. You know, you could be a good person anywhere and it's universal. You know, it, it translates through. It's like, it's like a, a positive reflection on humanity. And so maybe with these reflections, then we, we're going to call them our positive reflections. Because we're going to see, we're going to choose to take painting and take the, our time painting to see the good in the world. I think that a lot of times, most of the time, frankly, if we're being honest, is that the negativity gets amplified to a, certainly an uncomfortable degree. You know, and I think we're all feeling that. And so, and so we got to take these opportunities. It's the stop and smell the flowers, the looking at the sunsets, the appreciating the waves and the reflections. Got to take these opportunities, little ivory black. This gives us a little contrast and I'm going to put this back on our horizon line. And we got to take these opportunities to just take in the moment. You know, it's really the as cliche it is, it is. It's the one thing we truly have. It's the, each passing day brings us these moments. And in any given moment, and I've seen it because I've gotten to see the incredible, compassionate caregiving that happens at every level between strangers and family members, um, between healthcare providers and doctors and nurses. Uh, and it's really uplifting. And I think that that those aren't necessarily the stories we hear about or that gain a lot of traction, but they're the, they're the reasons when we all are like, oh, with all this dysfunction that seems like it's in the world, how do we function? And it actually is because there's so many wonderful people working so hard without wanting to take any credit for it. And that was certainly, you know, that's, that's a big thing that's motivated me, not just to paint, but to paint and give back, you know, to use my, to use my colorful storytelling abilities to try to connect with more people and reach out and, and really highlight the, the positivity that is happening every moment, every second of every day. And so then it's like, you could take the time, well, this, the opera rose, by the way, I like this color. Let's see, this will kind of, this kind of, it really stands out. But you take the moment in every day to appreciate that. You know, you wake up every day. Ha, I have no, I'm not a, I am no doctor. Um, I do have a lab coat that says Jonathan the Painter, but I have no, so I'm going to show it. We're going to, now we got to, this is like the best gift ever. This is my, thanks to my amazing friends at Mass General Cancer Center. But nonetheless, this is very far from medical advice. Um, but I feel like when you look at the world a little more positively, it helps the healing process in so many facets. And I feel like if we choose to take these positive moments with, well, my, this is what my dad would say. He'd always say, you know, Jay-Z, you can't always control the storm that rolls in. But what you can do is learn how to adjust your sails, right? And so to take these moments of acknowledging the compassion in the world and the things that allowed us to just wake up this morning and, and function and paying, paying them the, giving them the weight that they deserve. And it's like, wow, the world really is a good place because so many things had to go right just for us to function today. And those are the things that tend to not want the spotlight. And so if nothing else, I want to take, the Times painting, I'm going to try to do this every week, you know, because this, this is kind of like a, a, a pop-up studio that I, that I would do at the hospital or something like that. And, um, 
and take these times together and and do a couple things that basically allow our inner critic to take a break and give us permission to do something creative, uh, to demystify something that just might look overwhelming or feel overwhelming to start. Um, and that's just paint. This is painting with one brush, you know, and a, and a, a rainbow of colors um, to acknowledge and appreciate all the good that's happening in the world um, within ourselves and just within the community around us. And, and to really allow that to be the drumbeat that we kind of can set our, our rhythm to, you know, because it's just so easy. It's so easy to get overwhelmed um, and we're allowed to be. It's so easy to feel frustrated and we're allowed to be. But at the end of the day, it's also easy to reset our systems, but we got to work for it and we got to find the tools to do it and we could do it together because none of us are alone when it comes to going through traumatic events and finding skills and how we cope with them and turning that into something that can empower us to make a difference in our lives and hopefully have a positive effect in somebody else's life. Um, our strangers, our friends, our families, um, everybody can kind of use that positive reminder. And that's what Staying Colorful is all about. It's about that promise that I made to my dad when he was, was diagnosed. And he said, uh, Jonathan, I just need you to stay positive. And I said, how am I gonna do that? And it was by staying colorful. So I want to thank you all for joining me in my studio. And I'm going to try to uh, I'm welcome any feedback on this. I'm going to try to you know make this a weekly thing. I think this would be you know, great for me. I got a, a lot of stories to share from from Connor's Orange to uh, Mac the Valet um, and to Bobby the Brick. And I think that we can use the creating a painting as our as our springboard and our medium to connect together. So stay colorful out there, stay positive out there, keep being yourself and finding your voice. And you've made it, you made it today, you made it this far. It's, uh, it's more impressive than I think we all give ourselves credit for. So keep it up, like I said, stay colorful, and I will see you back at my studio the next time. <laughs>